Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another Photoshop Your Ride episode. In this episode, we have a user, Donnie, who sent me in a picture of his 1990 Mini. Uh, I selected this car because I think it's a really cool car. Uh, I like Minis, I think it's a great classic car, and I think there's a lot of potential and a lot of fun stuff that we could do with this car, um, as well as I want one. But anyways, uh, so I'm not always just gonna pick cars that I want, but it was a really good one. I like this side angle. Um, I don't have a lot of time today. Side angles are easier, so we're gonna go for the easier approach, um, get, the th get through the things that he'd like to do, and then I got some things that I wanna do to it as well. Uh, this car has a lot of potential, and I'm excited to get started. We're gonna do this one a little bit differently. I'm gonna do the first five minutes. It's gonna be more tutorial style to try and help you guys be able to do this on your own um, if you wanna follow along at home. So we'll do like, five, four or five minutes of tutorial, and then we're just gonna break into all the fast motion, going crazy nonsense stuff and make it quick and awesome. So that's it, stay tuned. All right, what's up guys? Okay, so we're gonna start the tutorial part of this. Uh, to do this, I just want to start with doing one of the most uh, most requested things when I when I get you guys' emails. It's normally I want to lower my car down a little bit and I want to change the wheels. So for this tutorial section of that, that's what I'm going to go ahead and show you guys is how to lower the car down a little bit and change your wheels. Okay, so the first, and I'm going to go really into detail on how you guys can do this. So to get to the step that I'm at real quickly, well, let's go right back to the beginning. So you bring your image in, okay? Then I hit Control J over here on my background image and I'm gonna hide my background image and that's basically my fallback, that's my fail safe, that's my copy of my original. I'm going up here to layer one and I'll call layer one um, background. Sorry, there's some keyboard sound, we're still working on the studio. Um, so I'm kind of, I've got a much better microphone but it's not on a boom stand, uh, it's attached to my desk so you may hear sounds that suck. Um, but it, these things are being worked on so we can improve them. All right, so. You got your background, and then this is our background, and what we need to do it, to make that a background is cut the car out of it. So the parts that you want to cut out of the car, um, I'm going to show you with a temporary little thing here. Oh yeah, my color palette's still messed up on this computer. I don't know why. Okay, so the parts that you want to par parts that you want to cut out of the car, are all the car parts, uh, you know, roof racks, car, 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 and then when you're doing the fenders, you want to get the metal part of the fender. So I'm talking about like just just where my brush is coming around there. You don't want to get above the tire. Leave the above the tire part, okay? So, um, the, that brush has nothing to do with how you cut that out. So the way you cut that out is you go over to your lasso tool, switch it down to the polyagonal, polyagonal uh, lasso tool, that's one way. So the way that this thing works is you click, or, click along and it creates shapes um, and then you can cut from there. Uh, the other way is with the pen tool. Um, I use both, um, back and forth because I can't make up my mind. Um, the pen tool uh, is better at making curves so when you have a curve like this you can click one spot you can click another spot and you can bend and then you can click another spot and you can bend and that will make a curve with a vector path and it's a uh, real high-tech shit. Oops, deleted my layer. Control. Yeah, anyways. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the lasso tool for this. Uh, I'm just uh, BRB. I'm gonna cut the car out um, and we'll come back when I have the whole car selected. All right, guys, we got our car selected, and the next part is a little bit tricky. So um, I'm trying to think of how I could visualize this. Well, watch my cursor. So when we lower the car, and we're actually gonna do it a little bit of a tilt, because you can see there's less gap here than there is over here. So we're gonna be moving mostly just things down, right? The car's gonna move down. Well, that is gonna, our, our background layer, our horizon layer, uh, is then gonna have an empty space, or it would have an empty space. Um, so you have to be a little bit, um, you have to be a little bit forward thinking about how you do this next step. And uh, there's a lot of ways to do it, but here's one of the ways that I like to do it. Okay, so uh, again, Control J is basically a duplicate onto a new layer. So Control J, we're gonna do that to duplicate our car just like that onto this new layer. So if I take that layer away, there's our car, right? One thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't move that new layer at all. So um, you can show it, hide it, whatever, it won't matter. So then, now that I have that, I actually don't want to modify this at all. So I'll go ahead and name that. Okay, that's our car. All right, um, I don't want to modify the car right now at all. I want to go modify our background, but I want our old car selection. So this is one quick way of doing that. Hit the, the wand tool, W, select your car layer, and then, okay, 
actually, since I'm trying to be real basic with this, um, hide your background, select your card layer, zoom out a little bit, click anywhere in the blank space, and that's going to make a selection of your blank space. Okay. Then hide that layer and jump back down to your background. And what that is, is that's the same selection of where your car was. Control shift I, that then narrows it, uh, that inverts the selection. So it's actually just the car. Okay. So now what we're on is we're on our background layer with our car selected once again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make room for our car to be lowered. Uh, or we're going to make more background um, than there was before us for when our car is lowered. So what I'm going to do is I'm grabbing the stamp tool. I'm upping my brush size to a decent size. I'm grabbing the stamp tool. And the reason that I wanted the selection of where the car is, I don't want to grab, if I grab the stamp tool and I start stamping out here, I could mess up our background. But if we don't have the selection, I can mess up our background. Uh, but if we have the selection, I can't mess up our background. I'm clicking out here. You can't do it. You can only paint inside here. So stamping outside on our horizon, um, keeping in mind that the car is most likely going to, um, the car is going to go down. So we need a little bit of extra horizon. So I'm just going to paint around through here. Now, if you're cutting the car and putting it on a completely different background, this is where that gets easy. But one of the places that a lot of people fall short is on the background backgrounds and, and horizons there back. Good backgrounds are hard to find. Um, and, but they're tricky too because they changed the light source of where the photograph was taken. I made that mistake in my last uh, little video I made. Uh, they're, they're tricky to say the least. So if you're just starting, keep the car in the same background. Do something like this. Okay, well that probably, um, you know, that'll probably be enough. All right, so it looks a little crazy, and I hope you guys are. I hope I'm explaining myself uh, thoroughly enough that this makes sense to you guys. But um, it really will in the next uh, couple seconds here. Okay, so um, now I'm gonna bring my car back. Boom, our car's here. Now we're gonna move it up and down. Uh, you can hit uh, V and use the arrow keys. Shit, I moved the background layer on accident. Sorry. Uh, v, move the arrow keys. That's moving our car up and down. Just, just nudging it. Uh, one of the things that the uh, owner of this car, um, Andrew, asked me to do was to level it out. We got too much height in the back, a little bit in the front, and it's a little bit slightly so. Boom. Okay, we're leveling it out. Control T is transform. Come over to one of the sides or the top, and that'll let you level. I feel I always use the sides. Um, so I'm just eyeing it up here. Okay, I think that's good. Control Enter will lock in your transformation. Then again, I'm going back. I'm hitting V for my move tool and I'm arrow keying down, 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 down. Okay, so now we have a relatively level car and you can notice that our horizon, we're, we're jumping into the stamped uh, part of our horizon. It looks a little um, silly right around here and we'll come back and clean that up in a little bit. Um, okay, so we've officially lowered our car. We can we can slam her or we can you know do a, I, I think that's a decent lower and I'm gonna to give it a little bit more. There we are, we're leveled out and we brought her down and we're right about there. Okay, so that is how you can lower your car digitally. Now wheels, okay, so wheels, go online and find a picture that matches the picture that you have of your wheels. Give me one second and I'll be back with a picture of wheels for this car. Okay, once you have your reference picture, uh, so I just jump onto Google image search and type in the thing. Uh, the owner wanted um, a pair of uh, 12 by six mini lights, so that's, relatively these and this was the largest picture I could find the highest resolution picture I could find which is kind of a bummer but uh, here we go so ooh, this might not work at all uh, you can take off view extras uh, select your um, hit M to select your whatever what's this tool called marquee tool um, and I selected the circle and I kind of nailed the selection on the first try so Control X is going to bring that rim off. Um, select my car layer. Control V, that's going to paste it on here. It's just way too damn small. Control V, Control T is going to transform again. Um, so we're transforming, we're stretching it up, and we're putting it on here. And so that's what you, that's kind of the effect that you get when you, uh, you get a little bit of a blur, you know. Um, so one way to fix this is the image that um, Andrew sent me is really good, really high resolution, and I could shrink the image down 
um, but that would be that would be a bad idea while I'm still working with it there's really no point anyways I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish uh, finish what I was doing here so uh, grab the original one hopefully you know if you guys when you guys are doing this you have a little bit more uh, common wheel oh, these are really common though I just had a hard time finding pictures of course if you have the time um, you can spend the time and find the right pictures at the right resolution they're almost always out there um, but it's easier when you're kind of just going with what looks good than um, rather than um, a, a very specific model that someone has asked you to grab uh, Andrew also wanted the um, same tires to stay on here so we're just we're just grabbing these bad boys and, and, and ripping them up So again, the way you do that is uh, select them on the original uh, image. Select them on the original image with your marquee tool M. Make your selection. Control X uh, cuts it out of that selection. Select your car layer back down here. Control V on that car layer, and it'll bring it. It'll paste it in its own layer. So you have layer two and layer three. Those are both the wheel layers. Uh, paste them. Control T is your uh, uh, transform tool. So that'll get you your little square around it. Stretch it up. Hold shift. That'll keep it as a square rather than, you know, you don't want to do this stuff. Hold shift. Stretch it up. That'll keep it as a square. And uh, get it to the size of the other wheel rim if that's what you're trying to match like I was. And then smack her on there. And there you go. So I hope that was about five minutes. I'm not really sure. But that's a way to change the rims on your vehicle and lower it. Um, and now I'm going to... I don't know. I'm going to turn on the music and I'm going to get wild and I'm going to go through the rest of the requests that um, Andrew has and then I'm going to unleash my own madness upon this car. Here we go. Alright, so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm fixing up where I messed up the stamp tool before, just cleaning up all those edges. Uh, the next thing is Andrew asked for a front lip to be uh, thrown on his car. It's really hard to build a front lip when you have a car that uh, like stock doesn't actually get down to the ground. So I grabbed a couple of different reference images and pulled a couple of things together. This is something I kind of, I had to work a lot with throughout the uh, episode to get it to look somewhat right because really the Mini doesn't actually have really ever come with the front lip that goes all the way down. The next thing Andrew asked for were some Group 4 or Group 5 uh, fender flares. Um, so I found some of the Group 5 ones and threw them on. Uh, they came from a silver car so I did a quick color match and uh, did brightness and then I actually stole some color from the the front of this car is kind of a little creamy where the back of it seemed to be a little bit more um, white I don't know if it's got kind of a, a just a repaint or something I'm not really sure the next thing he asked for was for bullet mirrors so we got some bullet mirrors coming in here clear up that frame rail so you can't see where the old mirrors went and stuff like that clean that up took that mirror threw it on there Next thing he wanted to do was remove the uh, teal um, mini, it's a city, um, whatever that was called, the decal or however that's on there, the paint color. The next thing that I had to do was, um, you know, put a BS for build thing where the uh, Mighty Car Mods thing was. Sorry, Mighty Car Mods, next time. Uh, and the last thing that he, Andrew, wanted was um, some tire writing on the tires. I wouldn't really normally do this on my own, but I went ahead and did it for him just so you could see what it looked like. So here we have the final product of what Andrew asked for. Um, oh wait, no, it's not final. He also asked for a um, roof visor, which they don't really make, but I, I was able to find one and make one for him. So we got a roof visor going on there, and uh, he asked for some different racks. I couldn't find the other racks, um, but I was able to find those. So there you have it. That is what Andrew asked for. We had different wheels. We had the fender arches. We had the uh, front visor. So now I'm, I'm going after it. I took the, uh, the old wheels off. Um, I'm taking care of the glass. That we're gonna black out later. Um, windshield wiper uh, delete. Uh, grabbing some overflares from a skyline that we'll later remove. And I was looking at some different stuff. I found some uh, fun canards from a, uh, a different, uh, older skyline. Um, grabbing some nice tires that I, I really liked that had the speed hunters. I wanted to stay with the style of having the, that uh, tire stencil on there. So I just grabbed some uh, speed hunters uh, tires. Trying uh, different rims. Uh, I was playing with a whale tail on there, which was, you know, a lost cause, but oh well, it was fun. Um, and so I'm just like playing around with it with uh, some black tires and some, or black rims and green rims, wheels, rims, whatever you want to call them. 
At that point, I decided let's go ahead and go with the black wheels. Um, and I put a side skirt on there and a couple uh, over fenders. So one of the over fenders on the front is from the Group 5, and the other one is from uh, uh, GTR. And you'll see later on that I wasn't really ended up being happy with the GTR because it gave it two different looks. The back wheel looked a little flatter, where the front wheel looked more stuck out. The next thing I really wanted to do is I really wanted to put a black roof on here with a spoiler and that, that ended up being a little bit hard. Um, well I did want to do two-tone as well so it took me a while but I got a black roof to go on there. Uh, I tried with that spoiler that didn't really work so I got another spoiler off of a mini from the WRC which was pretty cool. And then this is the crazy, th the next crazy part that we did was I, I cut the roof line down a little bit um, to kind of lower it down a little bit, put my roof back on there my little window visor. Um, did a pretty poor job on color matching the rear spoiler and I come back and fix that later. Tail light was difficult. I wanted the tail light to be up higher but it really did need to cover where the, the OEM tail light was. Um, so at that point I, uh, I realized that I did want to do two-tone color on the the roof and window as well as the uh, so it's the roof and the windows when I wanted to be black and have the body be black. So then I slept on this, I came back the next day, I looked at the picture and I said, you know, I need this rear fender to be better, um, the rear flare. So I came back in, um, took the flare off of the car that I got the first one from, and then went after that and fixed that thing up. And I did a bunch of other like little small uh, changes with some darkening and shadowing, and I did some atmospheric, atmospheric effects after I got it on the background that I kind of liked. Um, the background, the background was tough. Uh, basically, last night I wasn't super happy with this car, but then I looked back at it today and I was like, you know what, this is pretty cool. This came out all right, so I just needed to make some tweaks um, to get a little bit more realistic looking. Um, and so I added some atmospheric, some smoke around it, and some other stuff like that on the background, and I flipped that around to match the way that the lighting is going. There's some of that lightning and darkening that I was talking about. I think we're getting close. Oh, and then I worked on getting that spoiler better. And here we are. That's the end product. I, I'm, I'm about like 60% happy about this. I, it could have been better, but uh, it's not that bad. And I wanted to share it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Andrew, I hope you got what you were looking for out of uh, out of your uh, that car the first time we went around. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. And, uh, you know, it's BS for Build Styles. Like, you can do it and you can mess up or whatever. You can come back to it. And, uh, and I share it with you guys no matter what we end up with. I do it on a real car and I'm going to do it digitally too. I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. It could be cooler if I had a lot more time, but um, I'm leaving right now to go to the shop to go work on a real car. So, Anyways, I had a lot of fun doing this. Thank you guys for, very much for tuning in. Um, we are working on building a studio so we can do these better, faster, stronger. Not really stronger. but uh, And uh, I hope you guys like the new microphone. I know I do. Um, you can find us at facebook.com slash BS for build. Uh, you can email me your own submission. We need high resolution, good quality photos of your car and a list of what you would like done to it. Um, like what Andrew did, he sent me a nice list of the things that he wanted. Um, Chris at BS for build.com is my email. Uh, you can find us BS for build on Instagram and we are at BS for build.com. If you want to help support, you can go down to BS for build.com, scroll down to the shop, purchase anything from the shop that all helps support. And we also are on Patreon if you would like to help support. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Peace. Oh, wait. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like these types of videos, hit like, and I'll keep making them. Thanks, guys. Peace.